In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome everyone to this Mass. And we are always welcomed by God into his holy presence. And uh, um, we, we come to give glory and praise and thanksgiving to God and to petition God for all our needs. I'll, I'll be, um, it's one of the last few Masses that I'll be celebrating in, in this parish. But let us need, acknowledge our need of God and especially for his mercy and forgiveness as we pray to confess it together. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us join with the angels and saints in giving glory and praise to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy in us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy in us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that, loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. This we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord of hosts to Sabona. The master of the palace. I dismiss, I dismiss you from your office. I remove you from your post. And the same day I call on my servant. Elikam, son of Hillek, I invest him with your robe, grid him with your sash, entrust him with your authority, and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I place the key of the house of David on his shoulder. Should he open, no one shall close. 
Should he close, no one shall open. I drive him like a peg into a firm place. He will become a throne of glory for his father's house. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I thank you, Lord, with all my heart. You have heard the words of my mouth. Before the angels, I will bless you. I will adore before your holy temple. I thank you for your faithfulness and love, which excel all we ever knew of you. On the day I call you, called you, answered. You increase the strength of my soul. The Lord is high, yet he looks on the lowly, and the haughty he knows from afar. Your lo love, O Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Let me tell you pagans this. I have been sent to the pagans as their apostle, and I am proud of being sent, but the purpose of it is to make my own people envious of you, and in this way save some of them. Since their rejection meant the reconciliation of the world, do you know what their admission will mean? Nothing less than a resurrection from the dead. God never takes back his gifts or revokes his choice. Just as you changed from being disobedient to God and now enjoy mercy because of their disobedience, so those who are disobedient now and only because of the mercy shown to you will also enjoy mercy eventually. God has imprisoned all men in their own disobedience, only to show mercy to all mankind. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus preached the good news of the kingdom and healed all who were sick. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus left to Nazareth and withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Then out came a Canaanite woman from that district and started shouting, Sir, son of David, have pity on me. My daughter is tormented by a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples went and pleaded with him, give her what she wants, they said, because she is shouting after us. He said in reply, 
I was sent only to the, to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman had come up and was kneeling at his feet. Lord, she said, help me. He replied, it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the house dogs. She retorted, ah, yes, sir, but even house dogs can eat the scraps that, fill, that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, you have great faith. Let your wish be granted. And from that moment, her daughter was well again. The Gospel of the Lord. These words of scripture, they let us know that it is part of God's plan that since the time of Adam and Eve, when sin came into the world, it, um, that it was part of God's plan to come and to redeem the human race. God could have redeemed right from the very beginning, but um, now he waited for generations and generations of people to come into the world and to pass from this world. And uh, he, the Lord came uh, during, that, uh, during the Roman Empire, so many people had come into the world, they had lived and died, but uh, the redemption had not been achieved as yet. And Jesus came to offer the human race that redemption and uh, he achieved it for the whole human race. From As we heard of these readings, like Paul in that second reading, he's writing in his letter to the Romans. And uh, he, um, he, he went um, to an area that was uh, in the north of, of Israel and, and the people there were not um, uh, Jewish people, they were Canaanites. So and this is why um, he, um, he said, I wish to tell you pagans this. In other words, they didn't believe in the, in the God that, uh, that was revealed in Jesus Christ. And this is the mission of Paul, as well as the other apostles, to go out and proclaim the good news from God the good news of God and it, it, it was meant to be for all people, for all nations, for all time and uh, this is why we gather from different backgrounds and the Lord speaks to us and he, he, we indeed we are privileged to be able to live in a time when we know of the Lord Jesus and know that he has come for our benefit. How did he redeem us? He took our place. He suffered as though he was the sinner. He was a person, no matter how good he was, he was rejected. And even the religious leaders plotted against him. They should have known better. But they were the ones who instigated the, the crowds to, um, to choose Barabbas to be set free and not Jesus, the innocent one. And that's the, it's part of the injustice that human beings um, do and from which they needed to be redeemed. And uh, the Lord took all the consequences of our sins upon himself and he allowed himself to be, to be um, executed in a, in a very cruel way. It was a very painful way. But this, as I say, he had to suffer because of us. And so we, in, in the gospel, we hear of this uh, Canaanite woman. And she came to Jesus and asked for Jesus to heal her daughter. Obviously, yes, she wasn't um, uh, 
of the Jewish race, like in that sense, but she, um, she, she heard of Jesus and she knew what, what he was like and, and, and what he was doing. And this was her one and only chance that she had to, to help her daughter, who was, um, who was not very well and was expected to die because of her condition. She was also a person, um, a person who was, as the gospel tells us, she was tormented by a devil. And there's no cure for that in the sense there's no medicine we can take to, to, for, that, for that cure. And, but she heard of Jesus and she was expressing her faith in him even though she, as I say, she didn't belong to the Jewish race. And we notice how Jesus, he, he acted as though he, he was dis, just disregarding her. Because this was part of the attitude of those people of that time that they only looked at their own kin and um, didn't have much regard for people of, of other nations. And uh, each nation was proud of, it, of its own nation. And, but Jesus is, is giving us this message for us as Christians, as his followers, to reach out to others no matter who they are and to accept them as, as though we accept our own brothers and sisters. But Jesus tested this woman. We are all tested to show to what extent are we being faithful and loyal to God. And some people say, oh, there is no God because there is suffering in the world. Well, that suffering is part of the testing. And Jesus had to suffer as well. He, he shared in our sufferings. And uh, he, as I say, he took the consequences of our sins on himself. But he, he does test this woman. What, what is he testing her for? For her faith, to see how strong her faith is. And it's the love that she has for her daughter that propelled her, as it were, to continue to persevere in asking Jesus to do something for her daughter because she was, Jesus was bringing out from her the depth of the faith that she had in him. She only heard about Jesus. She didn't really know him very well. But from that little knowledge that she had of him, she had a strong faith, a deep faith. And she relied on him. So Jesus, at, in the gospel, it seems as though he's rejecting her. And uh, he was doing that, uh, just, as I say, to continue to test her faith. And uh, she passed the test. Whatever Jesus said to her, she did not tell him off and walk away from him. No, she persevered and she kept begging him and asking him to do something for her daughter. And with those replies, when we see them, that um, it, it was a way that where he was saying like, um, um, that he was I I rejecting her request but simply because she was not a Jewish person. But, but she accepted and as she said at the end, she said, even the house dogs eat the scraps that fall from their master's table. And in other words, she would accept anything that Jesus would give her, any help for her daughter. And, and that's why Jesus said, well, because of this, because of your great faith, um, let your wish be granted. And indeed, as the gospel tells us, that from that moment, her daughter was well again. And it shows that uh, God has love for every person, that God, whom God has created. God loves everything. God loves everyone. God creates out of love. And uh, we, uh, we are to share in that love. That's what it means to be in heaven, to share in everything that is God, to share in God's life, to share in God's love, to share in his peace and his joy, and to be there with all the angels and everyone else. It's, um, it's, a, it's a total uh, realm of peace and unity. And uh, um, there is no 
hard feelings in the uh, in heaven there's total forgiveness and acceptance of one another there is no unforgiveness in heaven and so we uh, we are to learn to accept our own crosses as I say Jesus himself he was rejected he didn't do anything wrong but the powers that be at the time they um, they wanted Jesus out and so they got rid of him in a very cruel way so that happens to people as well in, in, uh, in throughout human history so we um, as we come to this mass then yes I've been asked to um, to leave the parish to retire and to uh, and not to use my priesthood as much as what uh, I'm capable of and what God has granted me and so in obedience to the church I, I have to do what I'm told but it um, as I say it's a grace that has been given to me and uh, I'll always be grateful to God for this gift the great gift of the priesthood yes it's been 50 years since I was ordained and those 50 years um, I've, I've, um, I've been enriched very much by the, uh, the graciousness of, of uh, a lot of people and their uh, acceptance of me. So I'll continue to um, hopefully to be able to celebrate Mass even if it's a Mass that I'm celebrating on my own. I don't know what the future holds but um, I will continue to um, to keep you all in my prayers and to, to pray for the world generally and that more people may come to faith and to come to know this one Lord God and uh, to be imbued with his love and to give of that love to others. So, yes, we share with one another it, the parish every parish is meant to be a community it's a people working together in the name of, of God and um, and to serve God and to serve our fellow human beings it's part of what that's what the church is it's the, the family of God and we're all meant to be helping each other and supporting one another and uh, let us continue in then to be people whom God has chosen to be to feel the honor and the privilege that we have been chosen to come to know the Lord God there are many people in the world today who still do not know him but let us accept the as I say that that honor and that privilege and that great gift of faith and and to share in in that love of Christ and to be giving of that love as I say to to one another um, it's part of we are all tested it's part of our journey in this world but uh, testing only bring should bring out the best in us to continue to grow not to lessen in patience and kindness and humility jesus when he was on the cross he didn't hit out at those who were responsible for his crucifixion because he knew that we are all responsible for his crucifixion but so he could only say, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And uh, so that's um, what, what is relevant to us. You know, we, we, we hear the words of Jesus. We follow his example. He is teaching us in everything that he says and everything that he does. And uh, it's for us to learn from him. And there's no greater knowledge that we can have that will help us to live a meaningful life and a life that um, it can be very bare without any faith in God in, in especially like in, in the God whom we see and know in Jesus Christ there are many people who don't believe there are many people who believe in different gods they have uh, different religions different understanding of the supernatural but we have that honor and privilege of knowing Jesus Christ the sole redeemer of the human race so let us appreciate what we have and let us live strongly as possible to live according to the faith that God has given us and that may that faith strengthen in us 
through the testing that we go through. Let us stand. And with confidence and with hope and with gratitude in our hearts, let us indeed proclaim our God-given faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the faith of the Canaanite woman, we now earnestly pray. For the spread of the gospel, that we may take seriously the call to evangelize. Lord, hear us. For civic leaders, that they may have a care for justice and always act with integrity. Lord, hear us. For all who suffer prejudice, that God will open the minds and hearts of those who inflict these hurts. Lord, hear us. For our faith family, that we may be a welcoming house of prayer for all people. Lord, hear us. For those who have died, that they may have eternal life. We pray, Lord, for indeed for all our deceased, the people who we have known and shared our life with. We pray also, Lord, for people who have died from this parish. We pray for people who, uh, whose anniversaries occur at this time as well, that, and also that those who are being missed today. We pray for those who are mourning their loved ones. And Lord, may your blessing be upon them all, the living and, and the deceased. And may we end up being with you, Lord, in your kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, in your compassion we ask you to hear us and to grant these our petitions, our prayers, to grant them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, which will become our spiritual drink. And may our sacrifice in your sight in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest to you therefore <clears throat> most merciful father we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, and all those who are holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For then we offer you this sacrifice of praise. For they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect 
make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Pray your death, O Lord, and protect your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, our Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim, in humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercy, graciously grant some share and fellowship with the holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, and all your saints, 
Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things our Lord, to sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us pray as God wants us to pray and asks us to pray, to acknowledge that we are his children and heirs to his kingdom. So let us pray as we have been taught to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us turn to each other and offer each other a sign of the peace of Christ. May this name of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us spiritually. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Hello everyone, I'm Father Peter Caruana. I've been quite happy being parish priest and uh, that much has been achieved in that time and I thank God for, for all the, the graces that he has bestowed not only on me but on the parish. I wanted to be a priest from an early age. I can remember the occasion actually when um, I was in primary school, I was about second grade. Both my parents, well they're Catholic and they, and they both uh, are practicing Catholics. They, they used to go to church every, every Sunday from the time when they were children and with their parents and uh, so we were taken up um, to church every, every Sunday and uh, the family grew up that way. After finishing high school I went straight into the, um, the seminary at, uh, at Springwood and uh, there I was to study for three years um, mainly philosophical subjects. And after those years, three years of study at Springwood, then um, I went to, to Manly, uh, to St. Patrick's College in Manly. That, that's the college where the theological course takes place and it's uh, over, over those four years. Um, we, we studied the teachings of the church Well, my first Mass was celebrated at the cathedral um, where, where I was ordained in 1970 and on the 15th of August. And I, um, I, I had contact with the bishop there, Bishop McCabe at the time. He was the one who ordained me. And, um, but when I celebrated my first Mass, and it was a, uh, a great experience for me because it was the first time that I'm celebrating the or exercising the priesthood that has been given to me. Well, the 15th of August is the, uh, the feast of the Assumption of, of the Blessed Virgin Mary into heaven. And that's how I didn't choose the date, it was the date that was, um, the bishop was available to, um, to ordain me and I was quite happy with that, I was quite pleased because um, I, I have a devotion to Mary that she's been looking over me all these years and um, that, I, that I appreciate that it was on her feast, it was a very significant feast for me uh, to be ordained on. It was, as I say, it was Bishop McCabe at the time, and the the, the first parish he appointed me to was um, um, the the parish of um, West Wollongong, because I didn't have the responsibility of running the parish. I used to use the time going out visiting people in their homes and getting to know the people and being acquainted with them and uh, um, and just building up a relationship uh, with each with each family. After West Wollongong, I, I've served in, in, uh, in a number of other parishes in the diocese. But eventually I was um, uh, elected to be, the, to be, for the first time, the parish priest of a parish, and that was the parish of the Holy Family at Ingleburn. And that was at the beginning of 1984. Uh, at, the, at the end of this year would have been exactly um, 37 years. So and, uh, each year has been uh, great for me. I've achieved a lot and I'm, as I say, I'm, I'm very grateful for all the graces that God has given me. Yeah. 
the, the, the parish did not have its own church. They, they well, they have a, they had a church, but um, it wasn't the church. Um, that it wasn't meant to be the church. It was built in the in the in the shape of a hall, so that it would be converted into a hall. The priest who was there before me, he um, he had um, planned that uh, a new church would be built at the, the parish church. It didn't happen in his time because he he got sick and he had to retire, and I was sent to um, to look after the parish. So I had that um, that privilege and that opportunity then to um, plan for the new church. I had to s spend time saving money so that there would be uh, a church that would be built and without any debt uh, after it was built and that's how it turned out. So I thank God once again for the graces that he, um, he gave me to achieve. A lot of people in the parish getting to know them more personally to be able to offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass and to administer the, the sacraments and, uh, and to be able to give blessings to people and visiting the sick and, uh, and being, being with the children at school, um, celebrating school Masses, class Masses with them and, uh, and um, helping them to be prepared for their first confession or for their first Holy Communion or for their confirmation. It's all, um, it's all work that I, um, that I enjoy. Well, as I say, I, I enjoy working as a priest, whatever the, the role of the priest is, and uh, I enjoy doing that. I especially enjoy uh, being with the children um, and to be able to relate with them they're always happy. They're always full of life, full of, full of fun, and um, and I and I um, got along with them very well. I was always uh, looking forward to uh, to being with them. Well, it is important for a priest to be part of the school because um, the. The children are there, they need to be catechised and, and having a relationship with the priest and being able to speak with the priest and, um, and to relate with the priest and the priest to, with the children, that it's, uh, it, it, it encourages their spiritual upbringing and to, uh, to feel confident uh, being uh, not only at school but to be confident to be in church. will have to lose contact with a lot of the parishioners or most of them um, but I, I go with the knowledge that I have achieved what I could achieve in the time that I've spent in the parish and I pray that that was a, a good influence on the people of the, uh, the well the parishioners um, but that's that's how it is with life you know we, we have a certain time to um, to do our work and then um, it's left to someone else to take over. We have to um, continue to do what we can while we can. The basic message I could give is to hold on to the faith that uh, our faith is tested uh, um, every day. And, uh, but to hold on to the faith, to keep on practicing the faith as much as, much as we can. We are meant to um, sow goodness, to sow love, to sow peace, to sow joy, to sow forgiveness within society. And that's the best way that they can um, put their faith into, into practice in, in, um, in helping others, um, whether it be for so with social work or to just to support people generally out of the goodness that's within their heart from, from, from their faith that originates from their faith in God. I want to continue to do what I can to, to support people emotionally or, or spiritually, um, to help them journey and to continue to achieve things in their life.
I'd just like to um, take this opportunity to, to thank God for all that he has enabled me to achieve by, by God's own grace. I don't take the credit myself because it's all due to God. And uh, I thank God for the health that he has given me all these years of the priesthood over the 50 years. So it's all open to me now. It's um, whatever I see that, uh, that I can do, I'll just um, uh, volunteer to, to help out. And so may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you. Amen.